The old drunk told me about trout fishing. When he could talk, he had a way of describing trout as if they were a precious and intelligent metal. Silver is not a good adjective to describe what I felt when he told me about trout fishing. I'd like to get it right. Maybe trout steel. Steel made from trout. The clear, snow-filled river acting as foundry and heat. Imagine Pittsburgh. A steel that comes from trout used to make buildings, trains, and tunnels. The Andrew Carnegie of trout. The next day I would go trout fishing for the first time. I would get up early and eat my breakfast and go. I had heard that it was better to go trout fishing early in the morning. The trout were better for it. The minnows were an Idaho tourist attraction. They should have been made into a national monument. Swimming close to shore, like children they believed in their own immortality. Next morning I got up early and ate my breakfast. I took a slice of white bread to use for bait. I planned on making dough balls from the soft center of the bread and putting them on my vaudevillian hook. I bent a pen and tied it onto a piece of white string and slept. I left the place and walked down to the different street corner. There was a green slime growing around the edges of the tub. and there were dozens of dead fish floating in our bath. Their bodies had been turned white by death, like frost on iron doors. Their eyes were large and stiff. We played and relaxed in the water. The green slime and the dead fish played and relaxed with us and float out over us and entwine themselves about us. The fish had made the mistake of going down the creek too far and ending up in hot water, singing, when you lose your money, learn to lose. That creek turned out to be a real son of a bitch. I had to fight it all the goddamn way. Brush, poison oak, and hardly any good places to fish. Sometimes the canyon was so narrow the creek poured out like water from a faucet. Sometimes it was so bad that it just left me standing there not knowing which way to jump. You had to be a plumber to fish that creek. And that first trout after that first trout, I was alone in there, but I didn't know it until later. As I got closer to the creek, I could see that something was wrong. The creek did not act right. There was a strangeness to it. There was a thing about its motion that was wrong. Finally, I got close enough to see what the trouble was. The waterfall was just a flight of white wooden stairs leading up to a house in the trees. How beautiful the field looked and the creek that came pouring down in a waterfall off the hill. I stood there for a long time, looking up and looking down, following the stairs with my eyes, having trouble believing. Then I knocked on my creek and heard the sound of wood. I ended up by being my own trout and eating the slice of bread myself. We 
ended up at a large pool that was formed by the creek crashing through the children's toy section. At the beginning of the pool, the water was like cream. Then it mirrored out and reflected the shadow of a large tree. I cast into the cream and let my slide drift down onto the branch of the tree next to a bird. The fish ran deep again and I could feel its life energy screaming back up the line to my hand. The line felt like sound. Gawam! I set the hook and the trout started jumping. But I'm starting to get down Cause he hasn't been it was like an ambulance siren coming straight at me. Red light flashing and then going away again, and then taking to the air and becoming an air raid siren. I've had it. I've gone trout fishing now for seven years and I haven't caught a single trout. I've lost every trout I ever hooked. They either jump off, or twist off, or squirm off, or break my leader, or flop off, or fuck off. For all its frustration, I believe it was an interesting experiment in total loss. But next year somebody else will have to go trout fishing. Somebody else will have to go out there.